I'm Jeff Fritz with soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Alex Greiner. He is the co-CEO of Piega, a loudspeaker company based in Switzerland. Alex, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you very much. I hope you too, Jeff. I am. I'm doing terrific, and I appreciate you being here. I, I've, I've, I've lost touch a little bit with Piega. I remember reviewing some Piega speakers about 20 years ago. And I saw you pop up on LinkedIn, and it reminded me of a great experience with those loudspeakers. And so I, I wanted to contact you and find out a little bit about what Piega has been up to. So I know the company was, was founded in 1986, but can you give us a brief overview of Piega loudspeakers? Yeah, sure. So basically, the company, as you said, was founded in 1986. That's also the day of birth of me, myself. So... Uh, it's exactly 36 years now old, the company. It was founded originally by my dad, Leo, and his partner, Kurt. So they didn't know each other, but they both had the same passion. So Kurt, he was like the guy who was building really, really nice sounding loudspeakers. The problem was they didn't look as nice. My dad, Leo, he was like producing sound speakers that looked stunning. But the problem was they just didn't sound. And so how they started like finding their way together on an exhibition and started talking and came finally to the conclusion, hey, we should do something together. And Piega was founded. So they had kind of a hard start the first couple of years to get into. And after some years, they started producing the first ribbon tweeter they have created themselves. And that was kind of a milestone for them and also opened them the door into a new business opportunity where, of course, it became a success story and a huge success. And after that, around in 2000, 2003, Piega did a huge jump and started exporting as well and become bigger. And uh, we were also quite strong in the States a while ago, as you mentioned, 20 years ago, and we were quite, quite established in the States. Now, we just started again. We lost a little bit focus abroad in some of the countries, but just started again, rolling up and started some years ago with a new distributor who is doing a great job for us in the States. And we are excited to, to catch on on this and then finally start going on. The business is now since four years in second generation where my brother Manuel and me have overtaken it and leading the company since then. Well, that's great. It, it's good to hear that you're reestablishing a footing in the United States. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's terrific because I know the products are very well regarded worldwide, and it would be it would be great to have a little bit more um, exposure in, in the States. So I want to ask you next a little bit about the product line. I know at the very top of the product line sits the Master Series. Uh, and then you have the, the COAC series below that, if I'm not mistaken. But rather than me go through what I saw on the website, can you give me just a brief overview of the actual product series? And when somebody goes to the website, what they're looking at as they scroll down the product listing? Yes, yeah, sure. So maybe to spin that a little bit further, when my brother and me have overtaken the company, we have looked quite a bit into the market and we figured out or that's like general thing like the the way how people are interacting with music has completely changed like music is on spotify or whatever is everywhere available and it became a little bit more a consumption than an enjoyment and we did define ourselves that for us what we want to give the people is like a piece where people can enjoy music Therefore, we set our benchmark where we said, like, we don't launch any product with which you cannot enjoy music, how we would like to enjoy it, what a proper system is. Therefore, we're using in any system, we have minimum a ribbon tweeter. So in the entry system we are having as passive range, we're having like a bookshelf and the floor stand speaker with a nice AMT driver dream inside which other of our competitors using as their tweeter for their reference series. So this gives maybe a little bit an idea of, of, of the range we we're talking about. Uh, on top of that, we, of course, have the premium series with our own mates, 
Twitter Inside, which uh, is produced here in Switzerland in our secret holes. Then, of course, we do have the Coax series, what you mentioned, which is a little bit a bigger system, is in a price range of five to 50 grand. And um, we go then on top to the Master series, which is line array dipole speakers, which also comes in three models where you then really can go crazy with the pricing, but also with the sound quality, which basically shows what we are able to do and gives you a crazy sound experience. Next to our passive range, we do have an active range, which is a wireless active speaker where we build in the electronics ourselves and, of course, can customize the whole drivers we are building in completely with the DSP tuning and getting out maximum of the system and of our drivers, which is a really cool way to produce a speaker. And then, uh, of course, we do a little bit installing as well, but it's not on focus at the moment at ours. So we really did say like we want to focus and want to go one after next. So we started um, renewing our passive range, what I just mentioned, and also started building up our active range. Okay, and I do have a question about the passive and the active speakers. The active speakers, are they generally priced uh below your passive speakers or above where where in the in the product hierarchy does the active range come in or are most of the models available in an active version how does that work so basically our entry line system which is um the passive speakers the a series which is between two and four thousand dollars there we do have the active version as well. It looks the same, but it's actually a completely different speaker. But of course, it is roughly double the price of, of, of the passive speaker. So that's also because all the electronic is built in and what is inside of the speaker is a completely different story. Okay. So okay. It, is, it is basically a little bit higher than, than the passive speakers. Okay. Would would there be any plans to take, for instance, one of the coax models and make that active? Is that something you guys have experimented with? We are about experimenting with. Um, we haven't anything like which we say like, yeah, now this is the product or so we're thinking, but we say like, if we're going to do a coax series in active, then it needs to be the right thing we're going to do. And we're right. still kind of experimenting and putting stuff together and seeing like what are the best components fitting for that to to make that really a product which also fits into a coax as an amplifier. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the core technologies that Piega uses. You mentioned the ribbon tweeters. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, aware of those. And I think you guys have been using aluminum uh, in your cabinets for a while. Tell us a little bit about what's special about what actually the Piega loudspeakers, the components that go into them and how they're constructed. Yeah, no, but um, I think, yeah, with our ribbon tweeters, it is actually a really small foil. So like the smaller ribbon tweeter we're using for the premium series is a foil which is seven thousandths of a gram heavy. So it's like air, it's nothing. So if you compare that to a regular tweeter, this is around 0 0.3 grams heavy. So it's like 50 times lighter. On top of that, we speed that foil, we speed it up with an engine where we're using neodymium magnets. And there we go to the maximum of the magnetic um, radiation where we just reach the maximum what is possible in magnets. So basically, if you would add more magnets, you wouldn't increase any power. But what we're doing to tune that system is like we're using on the top plate of our drivers, we're using um, some magnets and pull them similar that they distract each other and resist from each other. Like this, that we can create an even stronger magnetic field and gain between six and 10 decibels, which just allows us to have like a more powerful engine. This paired with the lighter foil helps us to speed up and break down the system like crazy fast and gives the benefit of like a really clear detailed sound plus like a really, really, really nice sound stage. 
On top of this, when we're taking that system for our coax series, we're building a mid-range around. So we have in the middle, we have the high range and we have around the mid-range. This is basically the only true point source system which is existing. Means what we are doing with that is like, if you have a regular system, you have a high range, you have a mid range. And like the sound comes from two different spots, right? Means you have like, if you're not sitting in the sweet spots, you're having kind of radiations and it doesn't sound proper. But as in our system, this noise comes out of the same spot. It doesn't matter where you stand. You have everywhere in the whole room, you have just a really nice feeling music which is a huge benefit for people also who love to have it as a background music. And then, of course, we do spin it a little bit further with our line arrays, where we have like a whole line of high range and mid range, which is around, which is just like a crazy sound stage. It's created itself. I mean, you have to experience that to really to really see like what it is. No, yeah. This brings, of course, like a huge benefit to the customer asset. Like you have an amazing sound stage, and the feeling is just like you're sitting in the first row of a live concert when you're enjoying music. So next is our cabinets, what we are having. So if you are looking at the speaker, a loudspeaker, that's different to a music instrument. A guitar, for example, when you play it, the sound from the guitar comes from swinging of the cabinet. But a loudspeaker, the cabinet should do nothing because any erosion you have from the cabinet, any noise it makes, it just gives like a, a distortion of the, of the noise, which can affect like that it doesn't sound proper, it doesn't sound detailed. On top of that, like when you get vibrations in the cabinet, you just lose power. You maybe can imagine this like when you blow up a balloon and you have a hole in it, it just disappears the air and it's much more effort to, to blow the balloon up. So when you take uh, these parts, you basically have like a stiffness of the cabinet, which needs to be given compared with damping of the damping cabinet. If you have those two components, you just have the perfect cabinet. Luckily, aluminum has perfect physical reasons for this. So what we are doing is like we're taking aluminum press it to a form. You can imagine this a little bit like um, when you were a kid and were playing with the dough and pressing it through forms. So this is the same concept. We have a machine who presses the aluminum blocks to a form and afterwards it stretches them out to give them more stiffness, which makes us like a really small cabinet, but which is super stiff. So compared to a regular MDF cabinet, for example, when we are using a half a centimeter thickness, you will need three centimeters to four centimeters of MDF to use uh, to reach the same stiffness and the same quality of the cabinet. It means it allows us to build much, much smaller cabinets than when you have like a regular MDF cabinet loudspeaker. So this, of course, brings a benefit for those ones who have troubles selling the speakers to the better part in the house, the wife and and also gives us the option to to really like focus on that what we want and pair it with a nice design on top of this are we strengthen our cabinets with tension improvement models so this is basically a model which we build in the speaker and do kind of a push pull relation so we pulling the cabinet together, but at the same time, we're pressing it out. So this gives like a super, super stiff cabinet, which helps us to control the cabinet like crazy. And we almost have no vibrations or eliminations of the cabinet itself when it runs. Means it is much, much easier for people to place the loudspeaker. You can place it close to the wall. You can place it in a smaller house. You can place it wherever you want because you just have the drivers which are playing the music. And this is a huge benefit, of course, for difficult rooms as well. And for people who just want to have it like nicely integrated into the living room. Okay. Okay. Now that sounds fantastic. And so one other question about the aluminum cabinets is, is aluminum used throughout the entire range or when you get to the less expensive speakers, do you go to a different material? 
No, we also do our entry range basically with aluminum. Okay. Okay. So you get the aluminum cabinets throughout the entire range. Well, that, that's great. It sounds like you guys make many of the components in house, uh, you know, in terms of drivers and, and, and cabinets. That's, that's awesome. Well, the next question that I have, and you touched on this earlier, Alex, about the, uh, that you guys are developing, you know, uh, more with your active series, but what else has been, has Piega been working on? If we were to look out, you know, throughout the rest of 2022 and into 2023, what can we expect to see from Piega loudspeakers? Oh, that's a difficult question. We actually have been working <laughs> on a lot. So yeah, three years ago, uh, new person and started at Piega and was responsible or is responsible since then for uh, our research and development department. Uh, that's Roger. And he used to work before for BMW and was um, responsible for the first integration of the hi-fi system or for the first hi-fi system integration into a car. And he, of course, has a huge knowledge in acoustic, in digital tunings, and so on. So, of course, when he started at ours, he was looking like, yeah, what's possible? What can you do? And like, of course, has optimized a lot and so on. But what really exciting was we have said a while ago that we want to create the best hi-fi system, which is compact, a small speaker, and just sounds best possible. We have finally done the ACE Wireless, the smallest bookshelf speaker, which is a fully wireless speaker, comes with a HDMI integration, comes with a built-in network connection, comes with Chromecast, Bluetooth connection, and so on. So basically, it's a fully equipped system. You can run independent as fully system, and you also can run it wireless. And the sound is just amazing. So that's the system I, in person, probably am most thrilled about what we recently have launched. But of course, it's also our new Coax series, which is just like something new we have done, like from physical boundaries, what is possible with a cabinet coming out of one strength from the size, what's possible. And also like how the cabinet is stamped and how everything is done. What I just explained before is just something which is on a new level, a new controlling of the cabinet, which gives just a sound we never had before. Well, it sounds like you guys have got quite the, uh, the research and development project going on there with, uh, with Roger and, and, you know, experience in BMW. That's terrific. Uh, well, Alex, listen, I really appreciate the update on Piega, and I wish you guys the best of luck, particularly uh, in the North American market. We'd love to see more Piega loudspeakers here. I'd personally love to, to hear a pair at some point myself. Uh, you know, it's been 20 years. Now, I will say you kind of dated me a little bit when you said that you were born in 1986 uh, when Piega was launched, because I graduated high school in 1986. So that makes <laughs> me feel a little bit, <laughs> a little oh, bit ancient. <laughs> But listen, I really do appreciate your time, Alex, and, and, the, and the update on Piega. And uh, we wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you very much. Talk and to I'm you sure soon. we can make that possible with the listening of the speakers. <laughs> All right. We look forward to it. Thank you.